Thanks, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the City of Perth September 2024 Ordinary Council meeting. I'll formally declare the meeting open at exactly 5 p.m. And I respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet, the Wajak Noongar people of Western Australia, and pay my respects to elders past and present. It is a privilege to be standing on Wajak Noongar land. CEO, can I ask you to recite the prayer, please? Almighty God, under whose providence we hold responsibility for this city, grant us wisdom to understand its present needs, foresight to anticipate its future growth, and grace to serve our fellow citizens with integrity and selfless devotion. And to thee be your blessing and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. And it would be remiss of me not to comment on the four people in the gallery how how to attention they stood, CEO, when you asked for everybody to please stand for the uh, Lord Mayor. Can I say from the Lord Mayor to the four gentlemen in the front, not to the staff member at the back who sh did not show the same respect, uh, to the four people in the front, thank you very much. It was noted and greatly appreciated. Not, not for me personally, but for the office of the Lord Mayor. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, please note that in accordance... Councillor Gobbert with Council Pol Look at this. I'm not even looking at the paper. Council Policy 1.4. Did I get that right? I did. Of this meeting is being live streamed and the recording will be made available on the city's website following the meeting. That's good news for everybody following along at home or wherever you might be and welcome to our audience. In attendance, we have Councillor Doshi. Hello, Councillor Doshi. Councillor Gonsalves. Good evening, Councillor Gonsalves. Councillor Gobbert. Hello to you. Uh, Councillor Victor Coe. Hello, Doctor. Nice to see you. Uh, Councillor Catherine Leeser. Hello, Councillor. And Councillor Bruce Reynolds. A very good evening to you. In addition, I welcome the CEO to my left, uh, other officers to my left and right, and members of the public already mentioned, and any members of the media in attendance or watching on the live stream. Now, we're going to move to item 3.1. That's apologies. And uh, no apologies have been received this evening. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor Clyde Bevan is on an approved leave of absence. Now, item, is that 3.2 or 3.3? That's 3.3? Yep. Okay, no 3.2 because there is no... I see. Very sneaky. Okay. Well, not sneaky, but you know what I mean. Yeah, different. Uh, item 3.3, applications for leave of absence. Councillor Liam Gobbert for the period 1 November 2024 to 8 November 2024 inclusive. Thank you, Councillor. Now, have any other elected members, um, do any of you have a, an application for a leave of absence? No. Nope. Okay, we've already had Councillor Gobbets, haven't we? We don't need to vote on that one. Thank you. All righty, or do we? we? Oh, we do. Okay, yes. So, uh, will somebody uh, please move the motion to approve the leave of absence? Thanks, Councillor Reynolds. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Doshi. Does anybody object to Councillor Gobbett being away from the 1st of November 2024 to the 8th of November 2024? For example, who's going to check the live stream reference? Or oh, we won't have one then, but you know what I mean. Uh, no objections, Councillors? No objections? We can live without him? OK. We will be living without him through that period. Thank you. Lord Mayor's announcements. I'll be brief tonight, but I did want to take the opportunity. It's item four. See, you look worried. No, don't be worried. I know what I'm doing up here. Item four, uh, announcements. So I did, like many others, um, want to uh, remind everybody that the local government extraordinary postal election is underway for the vacancy that exists on the City of Perth Council. You'll see the vacant chair. Well, there's two vacant chairs. One is um, the Deputy Lord Mayor, who is away, and one belongs to one of five people who have put their hand up to be a part of our City of Perth Council. So I did want to say just a couple of things about it. Firstly, I'm really encouraged to see five um, quality candidates put their hand up and put their names forward. That is exactly what we would encourage. And I think on behalf of all of our councillors, we should be very pleased to see that there are five um, as I said, great community members wishing to be a part of what happens at the City of Perth. And uh, already I know there's been a number of community events. My congratulations to the East Perth Community Group who held an event, for example, on 
on Saturday afternoon down at Toast in East Perth, and uh, the candidates had the opportunity to address the crowd and um, uh, get to have their say on the future progress and what they might like to uh, bring to the city of Perth. So well done to all of them. Now the important stuff for anybody watching anywhere. Um, the ballots have gone out. They should have should have arrived or will be arriving at your address. And uh, from three weeks Friday, they need to be back by 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on Election Day, Friday, October 18, 2024. So that's three weeks this Friday. If you think you should have a ballot paper but don't, you can obtain a replacement package. Contact us here at the City of Perth. Uh, Governor, anything else that you might like mentioned for that? No. Anyway, we're encouraged to see um, lots of people coming in to Council House to put their ballot paper in, but also, uh, no doubt, they are being... Well, I've posted mine back, so I know at least one's been posted back, so... So there we go to the people doing that. But thank you and uh, all the best to uh, the five candidates who are running. It brings back memories. Only a year ago that we had our own elections. It brings back good memories for everybody, I'm sure. And that's where um, Councillor Doshi, Councillor Gonsarves and Councillor Reynolds joined uh, the City of Perth Council and have been a welcome additions to our team. It's school holidays. There's lots of activities in the city of Perth and I suggest visitperth.com. I just did that myself because uh, the kids wanted to get to the Scribblers uh, event and uh, I had a quick look to tell them what time they could go. So uh, Visit Perth is the place to be across all of those announcements. Righty then. Item five, disclosures of interest and CEO, I'll ask you to detail those, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The following interests have been disclosed. Councillor Catherine Leeser has disclosed a proximity interest in item 11.2 as a person closely associated with her owns property in Royal Street adjacent to the area in this item. Councillor Catherine Leeser has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.4 for consistency and completeness as she is a councillor on the Heritage Council of WA. Councillor Catherine Leeser has disclosed proximity interest in item 11.4 as she owns a property adjacent to the site. I have disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.5 as Jason Portolivo from Saracen Properties is known to me through social interactions, our daughters are friends, and Catherine, Councillor Catherine Leeser has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.6 for consistency and completeness as she is a councillor on the Heritage Council of WA. Thank you very much, CEO. Do any elected members have any additional disclosures of interest from the floor? Thank you. All right, so item six is public participation and 6.1 responses to pu public questions previously taken on notice. Now, there were no questions taken on notice at the ordinary council meeting on August 27, 2024. So we'll go to item 6.2, public question time. Uh, now, before we commence public question time, I will remind everybody there's 15 minutes allotted for public question time in its entirety. And this time is available for asking questions only. It's not for making statements uh, or expressing personal opinions. In addition, no discussion to the questions or answers is to take place. Questions received with more than 24 hours notice will be responded to first. And for those of you who have submitted your questions in the last 24 hours, here's the good news. Your question will be included in the minutes of this meeting and a response will be provided in the agenda to the next ordinary council meeting, although it will not be answered tonight due to the uh, lack of notice. Now, CEO, have any public questions been received with more than 24 hours notice? Yes, Lord Mayor. Two members of the public have submitted public questions. Okay. Now, the first of them is from Vicky, uh, Vicky Ranasevsky, I reckon. I'm going to have a go at Is Vicky here by any chance? Vicky unable to be here with us tonight. Vicky's questions and responses will be provided in the minutes of this meeting. Now, Glennis Marsden has also advised they're unable to attend to ask uh, her question in person. And so Glennis's questions and responses will also be provided in the minutes of this meeting. Now, CEO, have any other public questions been received prior to or, or even here at the meeting? Yes, Lord Mayor, one question from Sarah Booth has been received in the last 24 hours. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Now, uh, CEO, Sarah's question will be included in the minutes of this meeting and a response will be provided in the agenda to the next Ordinary Council meeting. Okay. Item seven, confirmation of minutes. Will somebody please move the following motion to confirm the minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 27th of August 2024 as a true and accurate record. Thank you, Councillor Gobbett. Second, who we're looking for. Thank you, Councillor Gonsalves. Uh, any members oppose this motion? Well, this motion being unopposed, I now declare it carried unanimously. Item eight, questions by members for which due notice has been given. Uh, no questions, no such questions have been received. Item nine is correspondence. No correspondence has been received. Just checking to my right. Nope. And item 10 is petitions. Nope. No petitions have been received. All right, well, we move to reports. Now, before we move to the reports, uh, the following items have been identified to be moved on block, and they are as follows. 11.1, .1, draft Brown and Kensington Streets character area local planning policy. 11.3, draft Hay Street Neighbourhood Centre's character areas local planning policy. 15.1, monthly financial statements, July 2024. And 15.2, schedule of accounts paid, July 2024. Do any elected members wish to extract any of the items which I have just listed from the on block motion? Okay. So I'll now move a motion that these items be dealt with on block. Uh, looking around the room for a seconder. Or oh, Councillor Lisa, just. Uh, any members oppose this motion? No? No? Okay. So this motion being unopposed, I will now declare it carried unanimously. I think it's important that I say that the recommendations of those items have now been passed on block in accordance with Clause 9.2 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law 2009. And the officer and or committee recommendations have now been adopted by council. So we're now going to move on to the reports which have been extracted for debate. And the first of those, uh, item 11, Planning and Economic Development Alliance reports. 11.1 is the draft Brown and Kensington Streets character area local planning policy. Would someone like to move the recommendation? Uh, we're going to, is that on block? Yeah, so Councillor Lucy, you can stay right there for the moment. That's on block. Yep. So, uh, sorry, 11.1, the one I mentioned. Draft Brown and Kensington Streets character area local planning policy is on block. Now, Councillor Lisa, um, and this is going to be regardless. Councillor Lisa is leaving regardless. Thanks, Councillor Lisa. 11.2 is the draft Royal Street neighbourhood character centre character area local planning policy. Councillor Lisa has declared a proximity interest, therefore has left the chamber. Do we need to close that door as well, please? Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Cheers. So would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Gobbett. And a seconder we're looking for. Uh, thank you, Councillor Coe. Uh, Councillor Gobbett. Councillor Coe. Uh, anybody wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Gobbin. Let's put it to the vote then, shall we? All those in favour? This has been carried unanimously. Thanks, everybody. And we'll invite Councillor Lisa back in. Thank you, Rebecca. GM caught napping. Uh, oh, yes, that's awkward, isn't it? Close the door again. Uh, so, Councillor Lisa has. Uh, no, is it that? Yeah. All right. So, 11 3, draft Hay Street Neighbourhood Centre's character area local planning policy is on block. And then 11 4, you're quite right. Councillor Lisa has an impartiality and proximity interest declared and therefore needs to stay out of the chamber. This is 11 for proposed designation of East End Heritage Area and draft East End Heritage Area local planning policy. 
So confirming Councillor Lisa is out of the chamber. Would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Gobbett. Second to Councillor Reynolds. Thank you, Councillor Gobbett. Councillor Reynolds. Nothing from you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Gobbett. Let's put it to the vote then, shall we? All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Now, uh, we can invite the good councillor back in. So, one at a time. I'm going to move second. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, yes. Won't be a moment, everyone. Talk amongst yourselves. Beautiful weather we're having. Is Perth in spring, of course. Okay, item 11.5 is the City Planning Scheme number two, Planning Policy 4.6 signs. CEO has declared an impartiality interest. Would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Gobbett. And looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Doshi. And now I am going to, at this point, move an amended motion and ask for a second. The amended motion you will see presented on your screens and also in your papers. But I'll read it out. Um, that council adopts draft revised city planning scheme number two, planning policy 4.6 signs with modifications as set out in attachment A with the following amendment. A, in section 5.3, table 1, amend the wall sign provisions in column B to replace 18 metres squared with 20 metres squared in clauses 2, 4 and 8 B. And 2, notes the submissions received during the formal consultation as set out in attachment E. I'm looking for a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, now, am I going to speak for the amendment here? Yes, yes I am. So I will um, just make the comment that, as we heard last week in the chamber, um, one of the considerations of those representing industry was exactly this: the increase from eighteen metres squared, which had been proposed proposed to 20 metres squared. We heard during the course of the discussion in the chamber that it was not considered um, a um, major stumbling block on behalf of the administration. We heard that from the general manager herself. So therefore, uh, the amendment that I am proposing simply reflects that. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak for or a second that uh, my seconded by Councillor Lisa? Councillor Lisa, anything? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I agree. I think it's a, it's a minor amendment, and as we heard last week, it allows them to have an extra standard size <laughs> within our category. Uh, so yeah, I have no problems with this. I was going to actually propose it myself, but you beat me to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is anyone else who wishes to speak for or yes, Councillor Gob? Thank you, Lord Mayor. <clears throat> Just a question, if I might. Um, with the um, proposed um, change to the policy, is there any way that or what mechanism could the administration suggest by way of monitoring to understand the effectiveness of the proposed change over the next year or two? Do, do we have any sort of mechanism through reporting back through EMES about whether or not this is going to create any undue impact or anything along those lines? to allay the concerns of the administration, but also to take into account the views that have been expressed through the public consultation. CEO. Thank you, Lord Mayor. If I could invite Rob Farley to answer that question. Thank you. Thanks uh, for the question. Um, through the Lord Mayor, um, all policies are reviewed on a um, regular basis. So uh, through um, all our development applications that, as they come in, we can actually keep our stats on that. Uh, and that helps to inform any review of our policies is are they actually being effective in what we're trying to achieve? So um, that's part of the course of what we do with policies. Thank you. Um, 
And thank you, Councillor. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? This is the amendment. No one else? Okay. Well, I have uh, said what I need to say, so we'll put this to the vote. Uh, this is the amendment. Um, so this will go to the substantive. All those in favour? And so that is carried unanimously. So the substantive motion before us now now reflects the amendment that I have uh, just introduced. So now we've had... Yes. Yes. So, Councillor Gonsalves, was there something that you were wishing to push forward at this point? Yeah. So let's. So let, let's just if, microphone on if you could. Yeah, I have two two amendments to move. Okay, so we're going to do those one at a time. So, um, the first of those amendments is on the screen. And I've got that here, right, I see, sorry. So the first of those amendments. Uh, and would you like to read that out, Councillor? Sure, it changes uh, Section 7.2 provision, or Section 7, Provision 7.2, and uh, simply changes third-party advertising wall signs and street furniture signs that do not meet 7.1 above may be supported in exceptional circumstances where all the criteria have been met and the change is to replace wall signs and street furniture to simply be signs. And that reflects, uh, I'll go into that later. Sure, yes. So we'll need a seconder for that to be able to uh, debate that. Thank you, Councillor Coe. Uh, so, Councillor Gonsalves. Thanks. I think this uh, takes into account the deputation and the, the uh, feedback from industry that we received. I think, in effect, it increases the scope of uh, of the wording, um, obviously wall signs and street furniture signs are just a subset of overall signs and having a more expansive uh, wording. Uh, we heard from the deputation that they, their key criteria was consistency when it came to a national and uh, capital city approach. So um, having this change will hopefully allow for that consistent national approach for their for the industry and their members. Thanks, Councillor. A Councillor Co seconded. A Councillor Co, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, Thank you, Councillor Co. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Uh, Councillor Gobbett, you got a question first? Yes, I do. Thank yeah. you. Um, could I, just because this came through quite late in the day, could I please have some advice from the administration as to their um, thoughts on the proposed amendment? Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Gobbett. CEO? If I could invite Rob Farley as the Alliance Manager Planning to respond to this, please. Thank you. Uh, through the Lord Mayor. Um, well, I suppose it needs to be considered in the context of the whole of the policy uh, because uh, uh, under 5.4, it sets out all the different policy, uh, all the different types of signs and uh, 7.1 identifies that third party is possible under all those categories. That needs to be related to the neighbourhood principles and area principles as well, which start to identify how we are creating a, a place. So when the policy was um, built, if you like, it took a place shaping approach. So where would we want to see greater levels of advertising, especially third party advertising? A uh, classic example is Northbridge Entertainment Precinct. It's very different to a residential area in the city of Perth. So we, we, we felt that where do, where do people congregate? Where are the places in the city, such as the retail malls, uh, people congregating? So we see the role of advertising uh, within that context. We thought about um, the neighbourhood centres as well as St George's Terrace. I suppose the impact of this is it means that as opposed to being a place-based approach with exceptions, it means it could be applied anywhere across the city now. If, if that were to be what the councils want from a policy setting. And it would enable all the different types of policies, including monopoles that OMA mentioned in a number of times, uh, to be considered for larger than what is permitted under the policy as proposed. 
Thank you um, to the Alliance Manager. And Councillor Gobbert, did you now have, uh, do you now wish to speak for or against? Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. And um, just based on the advice from the administration and the contents of the report, I'm not sure that was the intent of the review when we set out to do that. So uh, just based on the advice from the administration, I'm not, not so sure I'm willing to support the uh, first part of the motion. Um, I would also note as well the, the second part of the motion, yeah, although I think um, well-intentioned, I don't think it's really appropriate um, in policy setting to um, signal out one submitter over others. I think it's important to take all points of view and then in wrapping that up. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Gobbert. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the amendment as put forward by Councillor Gonsalves? Uh, so I will speak against, um, look, I'm satisfied that the provisions that we have, in particular with the um, extraordinary circumstances uh, provision, and as we heard with some detail last week, will allow anything to be considered. I think it's fair to say, um, certainly my recollection of um, uh, the, the spirit of council last week was that a council is in favour of anything being able to be considered, and we're not in favour of things not being able to be considered. But we did hear with some detail last week about the exceptional circumstances provisions and how that effectively means anything can come to the table. Anything will be able to get to the table. And certainly from my point of view, that's, that's certainly what I think we, that's the spirit of our group and what we want to always see considered. And certainly, for what it's worth, that's the spirit of the administration of the City of Perth over the last four years. We want to be a city where things can get done, where there is a way, where we can help people get them done. So I'm pleased that the exceptional circumstances allows all of that to happen, notwithstanding and borrowing a little from the point that Councillor Gonsalves made, I think the 18 metres squared to 20 metres squared um, did seem to make common sense that we change that. But I'm satisfied that as, as it relates to the amendment just put forward by Councillor Gonsalves then, that what we have in place will be sufficient for the time being. And I think, as mentioned by the Alliance managers just then, um, keeps us protected from some of the unintended consequences that may creep in should we change uh, Section 7. 7.2. So I'll, I'll be voting against this particular amendment, but um, supportive of the overall framework, as we've heard. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? Councillor Gobbert. Uh, Councillor Gonsalves, sorry. Just to close that, I think it was mentioned before that a regular review would be done, and I anticipate that with this amendment, uh, that it's a simple wording um, and that any intentional or, or unintentional consequences would be picked up within those annual reviews. Um, I think what we've had before us is a good faith effort from the industry and association to put forward their consistent approach across the country. And I think that, uh, that keeping the, the wording as uh, in, in general would uh, keep, keep us uh, consistent with the rest of uh, Australia. Um, and any results or consequences from that, we can uh, then make further changes as needed through the review process. Thank you, Councillor Gonsalves. So we're going to put that amended motion to the vote then. Now, all those in favour, Councillor Gonsalves, and those against, Councillor Doshi, Councillor Gobbett, the Lord Mayor, Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Lisa, and Councillor Co. So the amendment is defeated six to one. So we will return now to the substantive, but before we return to the substantive, uh, Councillor Gonsalves, there was something else to put forward? Yeah, the second amendment was to replace uh, pa in page 171, uh, table street furniture sign column B, uh, where it says the sign does not exceed one metre squared to replace with sign uh, does the sign face does not exceed two metres square? So, isn't that what I did? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Councillor. Um, so, we need a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Coe. Councillor Gonsalves. 
Thanks. Another simple uh, amendment here to reflect that the existing policy is two square metres. Um, it's really here to, to, to gauge the, the will of council to see whether our existing policy and the policy that will be carried in effect through a number of grandfathered, uh, uh, grandfathered um, existing signs uh, can be can remain consistent with our ongoing policy. For me, it's important that our policies reflect actual reality and that we don't create uh, exceptional circumstances and uh, and simply just grandfather in things where we're just kicking uh, the bucket down the road uh, for where we simply will face a number of inconsistent approaches in the future where some people will have two metres squared, some people will have one metre squared. So this tries to keep it consistent and therefore I commend it to Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Gonsalves. Councillor Coe. Um, just a question. Can we just get some feedback from the administration in regards to what this can do? Okay, thanks, Councillor Coe. Uh, CEO, through you. Thank you. If we could invite Rob Farley, the Alliance Manager, to respond to the implications. Thank you. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, quite rightly, as uh, Councillor Gonzales points out, it's uh, currently two square metres in the policy. And you'll see in areas like in Hay Street Mall and the like, you'll see where you've got on Telstra, you've got two signs, each of two square metres, so quite large. And uh, part of the, when we're doing the review, we, we actually sought advice from our economic development officers as well in terms of feedback from businesses as to um, how much of a barrier they were to people seeing into their businesses. And that's why we have reduced it down to that one square metre. We also acknowledge that every street is different. The footpath width is different. The amount of people is different. Royal Street is very different to St George's Terrace, very different to the malls. So one size, so I'm actually, as a planner, I love consistency, but here I want to be inconsistent because it depends on the circumstances. Now, in terms of the implications, uh, well, public realm is actually the City of Perth. So the City of Perth would actually form a view if, if it wished to, from a commercial perspective, if it wished to apply um, uh, for any advertising on its furniture into the future. Um, from a retro, I think the general manager last week mentioned there's no, ret um, planning policy is not retrospective. So therefore existing signs would not be removed. They would have the right to retain until whatever their planning approval is for, um, whether it's uh, forever or whether it's actually uh, got a time limitation um, on those. So it's it's not an issue of inconsistency in, in, in my view in this instance, um, but it's up to the council as to how much of a level of impact mm -hmm. the two square metres has compared to the one square metre, uh, given that you've got to attach them to a piece of furniture, they're not, freestanding signs that have to be attached to a piece of furniture, whether it's a bus, the old fashioned, the older style, um, bus shelters or the like. So the city has another control mechanism. Thank you, Alliance Manager. That was in response to Councillor Coe's question. Councillor Coe, you were the seconder. Is there anything you wish to say? Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against. Okay, Councillor Gonsalves, nothing to add. Let's put it to the vote then. This is the amendment that we are putting to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Gonsalves and Councillor Coe and those against? Councillor Doshi, Councillor Gobbett, the Lord Mayor, Councillor Reynolds and Councillor Lisa. And so that is defeated. The amendment is defeated 5-2. Two. So we now return to the substantive um, with the one amendment uh, as made earlier. Now, Councillor Gobbett, uh, you moved this motion. It now has an amendment. Uh, would you like to speak? Uh, not at this time, thanks, Lord Mayor. Okay. And Councillor Doshi was the seconder. Councillor Doshi, uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? Councillor Gobbett. Don't wish to close, thanks. Thank you. We'll put this one to the vote then. All those in favour? 
And that is Councillor Doshi, Councillor Gobbett, the Lord Mayor, Councillor Gonsalves, Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Lisa, and Councillor Coke carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Let's move then to item 11.6. This is the proposed designation of Pier Street Heritage Area and draft Pier Street Heritage Area local planning policy. Uh, Councillor Lisa has declared an impartiality interest. Would anybody like to move the recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Gobbett. Seconder? Thanks, Councillor Doshi. Councillor Gobbett. Councillor Doshi, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Gobbett? Uh, let's put it to the vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thanks, everyone. Well, item 12 is Community Development Alliance Reports. 12.1 is New and Innovative Events and Activations. Would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Lisa. Seconder, Councillor Gonsalves. Councillor Lisa. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it was very exciting to see these uh, applications come through, and they are new and innovative, so that's exciting. I also um, echo my comments when this motion first came to Council earlier this year that I'm glad they're not multi-day events because um, we don't want to uh, unnecessarily burden the people living on Terrace Road. Um, but yeah, they're exciting. I can't wait to see the um, EV carts if that happens and the K-pop festival will be really great. So um, yeah, I'm very happy to approve it. Uh, I commend it to my fellow councillors and I'm really pleased to see that the impacts are limited. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Lisa. It was seconded by Councillor Gonsalves. Councillor Gonsalves. Thanks. And just to follow on from Councillor Lisa's um, observations there, I think it's important to say that this is at the first two uh, proposals as part of our new and innovative events policy. And it's exciting to see that, um, that this sends a message and a signal to the community that this council is open for events. This council is open to do business where it can activate and, and provide a real impact to the community. So I commend this to council. Thanks, Councillor Gonsalves. And following on from both Councillor Gonsalves and Councillor Lisa, I'll just add uh, my comments in favour. Uh, as specified in the specific strategy uh, of the 2025 event strategy, but in particular this point, the policy enables the city the opportunity to explore new, unique or innovative proposals for events and activations which complement the city's year-round events calendar. That's what it was designed for. That's exactly what it's doing and going, I suppose, or marrying up with the comments of uh, earlier in this meeting from myself. Uh, that's what we want to be known for, and I'm very pleased that we're able to use that mechanism for exactly that, as mentioned by Councillor Gonsalves and Councillor Lisa. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Nope, so it's back to Councillor Lisa to close. Let's put it to the vote. All those in favour, carried unanimously. Uh, item 13 is Infrastructure and Operations Alliance reports, none of those tonight. And 14 is Commercial Services Alliance reports, none of those tonight either. 15 is Corporate Services Alliance reports and 15.1 is the monthly financial statements for the month of July 2024. This is on block. 15.2 also on block, schedule of accounts paid July 2024. Item 16 is the Chief Executive Officer Report. 16.1, uh, Local Law Review, Proposed Amendment, Local Law and Waste Local Law. Now, um, an amended officer's recommendation has been circulated to members prior to this meeting and a copy is available on your desk. Looks a bit like that. So would anybody like to move the amended officer's recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Lisa. Seconded by Councillor Gobbett. Councillor Lisa. Um, there's not much to say. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just that, you know, we have to... Rem obviously, the city has to go through these laws every now and again, make some changes. There's obviously uh, quite a few small, minor, inconsequential changes, but modernising them is helpful. And I'm very pleased to see these couple of amendments come through in the amended officer's recommendation, so I'm very happy to support. Thank you. Thank you. I should have pointed out um, an absolute majority is required here. Councillor Gobbett. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just to uh, think back to the early days of uh, when we were elected as a council, and one of the things that immediately stood out for me was that the city's policy manual and the local laws hadn't been reviewed for some time. And so I think it is worthwhile just to note that with the review of local laws, it does take uh, a significant amount of time because it is a statutory process. But this is well and truly an aspect of good governance of the capital city, and I'm very pleased to see it come before Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gobert. Well said. Um, so anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Gonsalves. Uh, just a question uh, for clarity and for those following. Um, just the, the question is through the Lord Mayor, um, what the rationale and uh, the purpose of this particular late amendment um, versus the original recommendation? Sure. Uh, CEO, through you. Thank you. If we could invite Charlie Clark, the Alliance Manager, Council Governance and Policy to respond, please. Through you, Lord Mayor. The amendment is, to, is intended to clarify um, so we had a provision already in there and there was some confusion about that provision. So the amendment is simply to make it very clear what the intention of that change, that original change was. Hey, Councillor Gonsalves, anything further? Uh, Councillor Coe, did I see you um, with a hand up? Um, this is just more a comment. Yeah. Um, I'm actually still happy to support the motion. But um, I um, asked a question about the MOGs, but my question is, um, when are we due to review this policy again? Because I feel like, like for example... Questions, when, questions, can I say? When is it due for review again? There we go. Uh, CEO, so through you to the uh, Manager of Governance. Council Governance and Policy, actually. Through, through you, Lord Mayor. This is actually the review of a local law, um, and local laws are required to be reviewed every eight years at present although there are some changes coming up to the Local Government Act um, where I think the time will be 15 years, but they will then expire if not reviewed. Thank you. Uh, so, is anyone wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Lisa. Nothing to add. Let's put this to the vote. Then all those in favour. And that's carried unanimously. Item... Item 16.2, uh, also absolute majority required. This is the adoption of the City of Perth Parking Amendment Local Law for 2024. Who would like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lisa. I'm looking for a seconder. Thanks, Councillor Gobbett. Councillor Lisa. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I approve these minor amendments which modernises this local law. Um, I remain concerned that the city is not doing enough to make it easy for trade vehicles in the city. Trade vehicles need high clearance and close parking to where they're working, and we really need to be thinking about that uh, in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lisa. Councillor Gobbett? Uh, nothing at this point. Lord Mayor, reserve my right. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Councillor Lisa. Well, let's put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. We move then to item... Can it be item 17 already? Oh, I'm having so much fun. Uh, item 17 is committee reports. None of those tonight. 18 is motions of which notice has been given. None of those tonight either. Uh, 19 is matters for which the meeting may be closed. Uh, there are none of those. Item 20 is urgent business. No items have been consented to being raised in accordance with Clause 4.14 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law. So with that, as I prepare to close, um, I noticed uh, at the start of our meeting we had one of the council candidates uh, in the chamber. We now have three. And to uh, all of you, thank you for joining us. Um, and... Uh, a couple of you will have missed my remarks at the start, but we thank you for stepping forward, for being a part of the process and for wanting to be a part of the council team. And that is a great indication of democracy and the health of our council being in very good order. So thank you and we wish you all the very best. And I think I'm right in saying that at our next ordinary council meeting, uh, we will have a new councillor with us.
We will. So uh, to all of the council candidates, the three that are here in the gallery tonight, but also to the other two who are not with us, we wish you all the very best and thanks for stepping forward. It's uh, magnificent. So with no further business, I now declare the ordinary council meeting closed at 5.44pm. Thank you, everybody. Could you all please rise for the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Perth, Mr Basil Zemplis.